Fish Tank, a uniquely hardened British film presenting the coming-of-age journey of a 15-year-old girl in an Essex council estate, it follows like a fly on the wall, giving the audience a glimpse into a broken home and how resilience and determination has made hardened walls between each family member. From the mother's jealousy of her oldest daughter's youth and freedom, to the boyfriend that takes what he pleases, Fish Tank does not want your sympathy. A story that simply shows decisions and routes taken, it emphasises a certain this is how it is with an accounts for state. This is two takes, and this is one shot. An analysis of the film Fish Tank. Be warned, there are spoilers ahead. Fish Tank presents the gritty and almost bleak outlook on a 15-year-old girl's life in a little bubble within the world that is the council estate buildings. From not going to school, to refusing to listen to authority, Mia just wants to dance. Even her friends, presented as ex-friends at the beginning of the film, have taken a more erotic and sexier outlook on dance, essentially excommunicating her for being different. There is more symbolism than one can shake a stick at, even the music chosen, and the sick white horse that Mia is intent on saving. Let's start with the horse. The symbolism behind the white horse springs from many portrayals of myth, from possessing exceptional properties that transcend it from the normal world, like having wings in the story of Pegasus, having a horn to place a unicorn, or multiple legs such as Odin's steed in Norse mythology. It goes further with the realms of divinity, by a way of prophesizing any kind of danger. Think of the film Stardust with a unicorn that saves Tristan. Now, if we know that within Fish Tank, there isn't this much of mythological premise when it comes to the sick white horse that is chained up next to three caravans on the private property. This, instead, is more within the realms of the symbolism of the horse in general and its connection as a spirit animal. Horses represent physical and, and inner strength, and the driving force in life, whether that is psychological or emotional. According to Carl Jung, horses symbolise the natural forces mastered by human beings, and just like how we harness a horse to ride it, we can harness our own energy to serve us to go further with our lives. Thinking about the white horse in Fish Tank, this doesn't show this in the way that we wish. The horse is sick, as commented by Billy on two occasions and is chained to man-made constructs in a concrete jungle, completely out of his element. Relate this as a mirrored inner image, or spirit animal to Mia, and you can see a connection. Rebecca Bengal from Criterion.com explains further. Everywhere she goes, tensions flare up around her like ground fires, and impulsively, she puts them out, flinging quick retorts at the neighbours, instigating and defending herself against a pack of girls, her former friends, whose dancing she deems inferior, but dancing is her secret too. Privately she dances in her grey hoodie and sweats, in an abandoned apartment so high up she can see the world below. Mia is too tough to complain outright, instead the film finds her mirror in the form of a white horse, as misplaced as she, chained to the concrete next to a caravan of travellers. Mia, throughout the film, though explosive at times, is a strong but silent sufferer. Born and raised in a community that also explodes around her, it seems she is only dishing out what has been given to her in turn. Mia has hardened skin and has gotten used to not getting encouragement or sympathy. Attempting to drink and smoke when she can with what change and time she has at her disposal. Mia is shown to be resourceful and determined, finding a fearless loyalty to her mother and sister that delves into a confusing inner journey that expands further than her council estate. And like a snowball effect, it all happens and begins by Connor. From the scene of finding the white horse, Mia goes home and discovers Joanna, her mother, has brought home Connor within the same 24 hours. And if you have thought about it like that, without any other context, Connor could be like a knight in shining armour, leaving his white steed to shack up with Joanna. But this isn't the case. The white horse can also represent sexual energy, included masculine energy, as well as strong emotions and passionate desires. There is no accident when it comes to the symbolism. Connor throughout the film is encouraging and patient towards Mia, deflecting her defensive mechanisms of hurtful comments and making her try new things that her family would never even consider. From a friend to almost a father figure in a few encounters, Mia finds herself softening to his positive outlook in life. 
and him being the only one that knows about her dancing and open encouragement for her to try out for being a dancer, it begs the question where the line should be drawn. But the director, Andrea Arnold, goes further, and Connor has drunken sex with her, making it a thing that happens, rather than labelling Connor as a paedophile, but rather an immoral opportunist with blurred boundaries. This is the same with Joanna, her being an opportunity that Connor decided to pounce upon, as it is revealed when Mia finds his house and his wife and young daughter on the video camera. And going back to the white horse, it symbolises the instinctive and tamed parts of a personality and how there is a need for balance. Like a warning, both Connor and Mia do not show balance. Connor with his opportunities with Joanna and then with Mia, and Mia with her anger to the point of breaking into Connor's house and then almost abducting Connor's daughter. Both do things without thinking about the consequences, and both make decisions based on how they feel, rather than what is correct thing to do. There is this sense of sexual repression, especially for Mia who is merging from girlhood into womanhood, as well as wrongful release. Connor having sex with Mia, and Mia not having any guidance to know which decisions are the good ones. Whilst the white horse can be personified as a literal physical metaphor, the chosen music, or shall I say, song, can reject that warning further. Bobby Womack's California Dreaming, known to be Connor's favourite song, and the song that Mia chooses to dance for in the tryouts, is marked more for being a simple soundtrack filler. Arnold's choice of the song being used three times in the film is to articulate the attraction between Mia and Connor through the sharing of music, and to emphasise Mia's own desires and awakening within this hidden and complicated feelings that she can't fully understand or find the words for, hence the choice of the song. Bengal says, Womack leads into the act of supplication, this drawn out near wail that becomes a kind of prayer for deliverance, the word California, a stand in for paradise maybe, or just elsewhere. When Mia nods in time to Womack's tempo, another silent transaction passes between her and Connor, it compounds her growing infatuation with him. In her mind, He's given her this song too, with his expression of desire and escape. The chosen song eclipse, the impulse that any teenager has about identifying with their home, but also wanting to leave it as quickly as possible into the unknown. Wanting it, but being scared of the sudden change. This can be presented in the situations that Mia finds itself in. The first showing of the song, being in the car, a family outing that has Mia being the only one willing to go into the water with Connor, and with the awareness that this was considered a unique and rare outing, perhaps indicating that many people grow up and live their whole lives in the same place, this sets the foundations that there is hope for them to perhaps leave, even if it is temporary. With Mia, this becomes truth when she leaves her Wales. The second with Mia dancing in the dark the second time is with Mia dancing in the darkened living room for Connor, who eventually has sex with her, and the last time, of Mia's choice and realisation of her innocence eventually leaving her. All of these moments have certain interactions based on desire and the wanting of some sort of release. So, what other interactions that Mia has that hold some sort of hope for her? While still merging the highly sexualized repression and expression throughout the film, there are moments of stillness and quiet sensuality that take the direction to be more muted with free-flowing tenderness. The interactions between Mia and Billy present this untold tenderness and acceptance of one another. This is a stark contrast to the rest of Mia's interactions with anyone else we, the audience, have grown familiar with in Mia's world. This sensuality can go further in the film's wardrobe choices and in Mia's family's flat. From the sensual presentation of Joanna, Mia's ex-friends and even Tyler in their choice of clothes or lack thereof, they are in complete contrast of Mia's plain, unrevealing wardrobe. To the colour scheme, pinks and greens, the decorations and the Palm Beach mural in the flat, there is a sense of this undercurrent that is hinted in all of its characters, mixed with this hardness that can be reflected in the peeling wallpaper to the lurid insults between each family member. The death of the white horse, just after a sexual encounter with Connor, who then leaves without a word, might present this shift of Mia blossoming into a woman quicker than planned, literally and figuratively. The interpretation that shouted out to me was the death of Mia's innocence, or what was left of it. From losing her virginity to almost dancing for an adult job in a club, 
may have seen and felt so much in such a short space of time, is almost heartbreaking to watch. When Mia agrees to go to Wales with Billy, it's almost like a sigh of relief and a reawakening of possibilities for young Mia. But however hard in her situation was, it seems that Billy's presence might have been a good thing. But this isn't a fairy tale ending. Fish Tank, in all of its starkness and bleakness at times, shows hidden depths and a closeness within the council state that bounce with sounds and colours that create and coexist like a world of its own. Mia's freedom from there, by a simple invitation from an older guy who she happens to meet by accident, stems from her need to explore and express herself even more than her dancing in an abandoned flat. This goes further to Mia having the breathing room to find herself in another place with another person outside of her family. And whatever may come, she has only lessons to learn from the interactions and perhaps mistakes that Connor and his encouragement have shown. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed what was said, then please support the show from my Patreon. And if you want to know what's happening next, follow my Instagram. To know my day-to-day thoughts, follow my Twitter. And if you want to read what was said instead, then follow my blog, linked elsewhere. With your support, I can only make this better, so again, thank you from the bottom of my heart.